about the Industrial Revolution or you know, that period was how do you deal with uh, public safety in terms of health and water quality and, and the like of this? <clears throat> They finally understood that uh, the, t the lack of uh, sewage systems uh, were what led to the epidemics of typhoid and, and uh, cholera and the like of that. So if you go, you know, there's whole you know, programs about how they built the, the sewage systems in London, which you know, prevented these epidemics. And the reason, as uh, Engels pointed out, that it was necessary was that these epidemics would, would kill off the rich people as well as the poor people. So they had their own motivation for building these uh, structures. Agriculture became industrialized, uh, steam power traction, steam traction engines they call them, for, uh, Ford's assembly line, and so forth. So. Uh, there was resistance and resentment of this whole situation, uh, which I can only mention here because that would be subject for a whole other presentation, perhaps in the future. But uh, one thing that was interesting about this period was the tremendous immigration into this country from all around, from Poland, Italy, and Southern Europe, and so forth. Well. Capitalism needed labor. Uh, they, they couldn't do all this without people to do it. So they, they promoted the idea that this was the promised land and so forth. Now what's interesting is we're at another phase of this where they don't need so many people, so therefore they're against the immigrants. So if you look at the dynamics of the economics of capitalism, it's really quite interesting. Uh, one final bit, if you ever want to see uh, uh, literally visit uh, such a place we've been talking about, the Watkins Mill, a uh, state historic site, uh, northeast of here, probably about 40, 50 miles. Uh, it's fascinating to visit. Uh, it's, it's a completely intact woolen mill, and with all the machinery still there. And the reason why it still exists is kind of interesting because during World War I, uh, a lot of these things were emptied out as for scrap metal. And so that the, the, all, the, all these things just disappeared. That is the, the uh, interior equipment. This one was out in the country. So it was just padlocked and everybody forgot about it. So later, decades later, people realized there, there is this whole place that is exactly the way it was. And I really recommend you visit it. It's, uh, maybe we could even have a, uh, a summer trip up there sometime. How many people have been there? Oh, good. Well, several, several of you have. But it is a fascinating Carney. place. It's by Kearney? Uh, yeah, we're at right. Seltzer Springs, and you go directly uh, West on Highway 92. Yeah, yeah I'd like to make a comment about that. I've been up there like five times, and uh, the first time I was up there, I noticed that they kept saying that Watkins built this stuff, and it didn't make any sense to me. And so I asked him about that. I said he did all this by himself. <laughs> Although he had 200 slaves, <laughs> each of the five times that I've been back, it's the same thing except there was a woman that spoke and asked him the question before I did one time. And so they never put it in the thing that he had 200 slaves to build all that. Well, this is my last slide, which sort of speaks for itself. But uh, I would just one last bit. I would recommend that you look up the pages in the Communist Manifesto where Marx talks about the development of capitalism and what it did in the world. It's about two or three pages, but it is astonishing. You, you, he shows in summary form how this capitalism transformed the world. But he also said on another occasion, capitalism comes into the world dripping with blood from head to toe. So it has this double aspect. Thank you.